Welcome back to the End of Days Chronicles channel. Islam, a vast and exclusive religion, has stringent regulations regarding non-Muslims joining its community. Only individuals who follow Islam are permitted to partake in the sacred pilgrimage to Mecca, and proselytizing in Islamic countries is strictly forbidden, carrying severe penalties, including capital punishment. However, it is intriguing to discover that there are people, including notable celebrities, who are embracing Islam and undertaking the annual journey to Mecca to pay tribute at the shrine of Muhammad. Nevertheless, it's important to acknowledge that Catholicism also places significance on pilgrimages. The Catholic Church organizes pilgrimages to holy sites associated with the Lord and Miriam, as well as Fatima. In a previous video titled Pergamum, The Throne of Satan, we discussed the pilgrimage destination of Lourdes, highlighting how pilgrimages can symbolize ancient pagan religions. It is crucial for us to exercise caution and be aware of these subtle influences. Now, let's briefly delve into the figure of Muhammad. Muhammad Mustafa, born in 570 AD, and passing away in 632 AD, sought refuge in Medina in 622 AD after his wife Khadijah's death. When they married, he was 25 years old, while she was 40 years old. Interestingly, Khadijah's cousin Wara was a Roman Catholic, suggesting that Muhammad's wife may have also followed the Roman Catholic faith. Khadijah, who was immensely wealthy, held significant power and employed Muhammad, the young man who eventually became her husband, Muhammad later led an expedition to Mecca in 630 AD, two years before his death and four years before Omar assumed leadership. It's worth noting that Muhammad, being illiterate, depended on a scribe to transcribe his experiences and teachings, resulting in the unique compilation of the Quran. The Quran sets itself apart from other religious texts by its belief that it is a directly dictated book, rather than one transcribed by a prophet. According to Islamic teachings, it is considered the literal word of God and should always be preserved in the Arabic language. The compilation of the Quran took place in 650 AD. Now, let's explore the symbolism associated with Islam. The well-known symbol of Islam is commonly referred to as the crescent moon and star. However, it is important to delve into the origins of this symbol and gain a deeper understanding of Allah. The use of the crescent moon symbol can be traced back to as early as 2000, 100 before Christ, where it was prevalent in various pagan religions. The symbol of the crescent moon was extensively used in polytheistic traditions, and there is archaeological evidence supporting its existence even during the time of Abraham. In Mecca, all the Arabs worship the moon god Hubal at the Kaaba. The crescent moon continues to serve as the official symbol of Islam. Prominently displayed on top of mosques worldwide, and beside the Kaaba, on top of the Makam Ibrahim, it represents a remnant of ancient moon worship, now adapted within a monotheistic framework. According to the Encyclopedia of Religion, Allah was considered the moon god who was believed to be married to the sun goddess, and together, they were thought to have produced three goddesses known as the daughters of Allah, Alat, Alutsa, and Manat. The Encyclopedia also indicates that Allah corresponded to the Babylonian god Babel, and the Arabs were already aware of Allah long before the time of Muhammad, revering him as the supreme deity. Before the advent of Islam, the Arabs acknowledged a multitude of gods and goddesses, with each tribe venerating its own. Furthermore, in addition to being recognized as the god of the Quraysh tribe, which was Muhammad's tribe before the introduction of Islam, Allah was also associated with nature deities. The daughters of Allah, namely Alad Aluda and Manat, were believed to serve as intercessors for the people. It is interesting to note that the names of the first two daughters were derived from feminine forms of Allah. While Muslims today deny worshipping Allah's daughters and consider such beliefs as pagan, it is worth noting that initially Muhammad commanded his followers to offer prayers to these entities. However, he later retracted his command, attributing it to the influence of the devil. This event from Muhammad's life serves as the subject of Salman Rushdie's controversial book, The Satanic Verses which is known for its profanity and accusations of racism. From a historical perspective, 
It is important to recognize that during his youth Muhammad actively participated in the worship of the 360 pagan gods housed in the Kaaba in Mecca, which was under the control of the Quraysh tribe, of which Muhammad himself was a respected member. As Muhammad grew older, the deity Allah carried significant importance as the god specifically revered by the Quraysh tribe, which interestingly happened to be Muhammad's own tribe. Muhammad's mission was to introduce Islam and guide his people away from the practice of polytheism. The daughters of Allah, namely Alat, Aluda, and Manat, held esteemed positions as intermediaries between the people and the divine. Notably, the names of the first two daughters were derived from feminine forms of Allah, while Muslims in present times reject the worship of Allah's daughters and consider such beliefs as pagan. It is worth noting that initially Muhammad instructed his followers to offer prayers to these entities. However, he later revoked his command, attributing it to the influence of the devil Salman Rushdie's book, The Satanic Verses, explores this event from Muhammad's life, but we strongly discourage reading it due to its offensive language and racist content. From a historical perspective, it is important to acknowledge that during his youth Muhammad actively participated in the worship of the 360 pagan gods housed in the Kaaba in Mecca, which was under the authority of the Quraysh tribe, of which Muhammad himself was a respected member. The deity worshipped in the Kaaba was considered the most supreme among the other gods present Muhammad's approach was straightforward. He prohibited the worship of the remaining 359 pagan gods and emphasized the recognition of only one deity. Instead of attempting to convert the Arab people to the monotheism of Christianity, Muhammad chose to establish the worship of this remaining deity, known as Allah, which ultimately gave rise to the religion of Islam. It is important to acknowledge that within these religions and churches, there are sincere and devout individuals who genuinely believe they are following the correct path. However, there can exist a spiritual blindness that can only be removed by the work of the Holy Spirit. Now, let's explore the alleged similarities between the Roman Catholic Church and Islam. According to a Jesuit named Alberto Rivera, who claimed to have received personal instructions from Cardinal B, the Jesuit general, it is asserted that the Roman Catholic Church intentionally orchestrated the rise of Islam as a means to gain control over the Arabs and secure Jerusalem. It is important to note that this claim is widely regarded as highly implausible and is often dismissed in scholarly literature. However, it is essential to consider the historical context within which these assertions are made. Regarding the question of which came first, Catholicism or Islam, Catholicism has an earlier origin. However, Catholicism faced significant challenges, particularly in relation to the Eastern Orthodox Church. A split between the Eastern Orthodox Church and the Roman Catholic Church occurred during the 11th century, as the former rejected the latter's claim of sole authority over the Church, leading to a conflict between the two groups. While some progress was made to resolve this issue after the Russian Revolution, the two factions never fully reunited, presenting an ongoing challenge for Catholicism. This situation provided an opportunity for Rome to develop a plan to either eradicate or supplant true Christianity particularly in the Middle East. Interestingly, both Islam and Catholicism share certain practices, such as the observance of daily prayers and the use of prayer beads resembling the rosary. Additionally, there are resemblances in symbolism, with Catholicism using the God all-seeing eye and the attire of nuns resembling that of Islamic women. It is important to note that these teachings may not be universally accepted, but they are documented in various books, even if sometimes obscured such deception can be highly misleading and easily overlooked. As we awaken in these final days, it is crucial to seek divine guidance from the true and living God Yeshua. May the Lord bless and keep you, make His face shine upon you, be gracious to you, turn His face toward you, and grant you peace. Amen. Thank you for your attention, and may God bless you abundantly.